when they took me to meet the Lubavitcher Rebbe, uh, he asked me what my Hebrew name was. And I told him, Mayo. And he said, ah, he says, you're the one who will bring light to Israel. Erev shel shoshanim Netzena el habustan Oscar and Tony-nominated actor and folk singer Theodore Bikel was born in Vienna on May 2nd, 1924. We used to take hikes in the Vienna woods on Sundays, and the woods would uh, echo with the sound of Yiddish songs. It was wonderful. So that's my schooling as far as music is concerned. On March 12th, 1938, 13-year-old Theo and his parents hid behind the curtains of their home and watched in horror as Hitler and his troops annexed Vienna. For the next six months, the Bikel struggled to escape Europe. We were very, very lucky because the British gave out very limited entry permits into Palestine. My father headed the labor Zionist list and it saved our lives. The Bikels were only allowed to take one suitcase each, and the rest of their belongings were confiscated and stored in a warehouse guarded by a Nazi commander. My grandmother took it into her head to liberate our things. She went there every day. She wanted to talk to him, and he wouldn't see her. But she sat in the anteroom every day from the time they opened till, until they closed, and he had to pass her on his way in and on his way out. She was crying all the time. And he finally said after a couple of weeks of that, get that old Jewish woman out of my sight and sign off anything she wants, just get her out of here. He signed off and they got our things out of storage and they, she had them packed up and shipped from Nazi Austria to Tel Aviv and they arrived in cartons with swastikas all over them. Because his socialist father had instilled in him the idea of becoming a pioneer, Bikel joined a kibbutz after graduating agricultural school in Palestine. It became clear to me that I had absolutely no inclination or, or talent for agriculture. None. But I could sing songs about the beauty of the work that I wasn't doing. The kibbutz sent Theo to a seminar in Tel Aviv to learn how to produce holiday pageants. Once I tasted professionalism uh, that was available in, in Tel Aviv, I knew that that's, that was my life. I, could, I went back to the kibbutz and said, I'm sorry, but I can't stay. Bikel began his 70-year-long acting career with the Habima Theater, the National Theater of Israel. But when he and a group of young actors realized the older actors had no intention of giving them any real parts, they founded the Kamari Theater in Tel Aviv. I did four plays with the Kamari, and by that time the war was over in Europe. Bikel moved to London in 1946 to study at the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art. He made his London stage debut in 1948. Over the next six years, Bikel acted in the English theater, including in such hits as Sir Laurence Olivier's Streetcar Named Desire and Peter Ustinov's The Love of Four Colonels. Bikel left London when he was offered a role in the Broadway show Tonight in Samarkand. And I came to New York, and I fell in love with New York. I said, I spent eight years in England. I wasn't an Englishman ever. I spent eight weeks in New York, and I was a New Yorker. Bikel was then offered the role of Captain Von Trapp in the original Broadway production of The Sound of Music, alongside Mary Martin. The show was successful beyond anyone's expectations and played to sold-out audiences for more than two years. The song Edelweiss, not in the original script, was written especially for Bikel. Edelweiss, Edelweiss. While building his theatrical resume, Bikel also launched an illustrious career in music. In England, I sang. It was never a career. But in America, as you well know, they don't tolerate your doing anything well without forcing you to accept money for it. <laughs> Among Theo's many recordings, Russian gypsy music was one of his most beloved styles. He used to go to Paris when I was a student in London. And in Paris were all the expatriate Russians and all the gypsies. 
And I would sometimes go, and I was a poor student, and I would nurse one glass of champagne all night long to listen to the music. Jack Holtzman of Elektra Records heard Theo singing at a party and asked him to record with his label. Bikel introduced traditional Yiddish songs to wide audiences, giving the language a glamour and a legitimacy it had lost. Throughout his career, Theo recorded 37 contemporary and folk albums in 21 different languages. Singing all these other languages um, that I don't speak, but my sense as an actor is, if I don't understand what I'm singing, they won't understand it either. The audience won't. So I made it my business to understand everything that I sing. Bikel's first film role was playing a German officer in The African Queen in 1951. He soon became known for his mastery in performing characters of different nationalities. In 1958, Bikel was nominated for an Academy Award for his role as a merciful sheriff in The Defiant Ones. I played Germans, I played Nazis, I played all kinds of... But there was always a purpose to what I, what I did. I believe in, in some redeeming features of kindness, human kindness, that is necessary. I get that from my background, I get that from my Jewishness, I get that from the ethos that I, that I grew up with. And um, I've never, 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 never regretted it. If I were a rich man, yabba bibba bibba yabba bibba 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 bum. The role for which Bikel was best known was Tevya in Fiddler on the Roof. He performed this character more than any other actor to date, more than 2,000 times. Bikel's final project was the documentary Theodore Bikel in the Shoes of Shalom Aleichem. The film is an outgrowth of Bikel's one-man show, Shalom Aleichem, Laughter Through Tears, in which the versatile actor performed more than 20 characters on stage. Theo continued to perform until his last days, determined to bring Yiddish culture to yet another generation of young people. Young people felt the hankering of a world that was slipping away from them. Their grandparents had it, but the father and mother tried to get away from these funny-looking people, dressed funny, talked funny. Let's be very American. So it became very American, and their sons and daughters said, wait a minute. We have something there in, a, in our past, and you're not giving it to us. So where did they go? They went to Klezma. Later they found out that that instrumental music also had texts, and they learned the text. So it threw it back door. They got into Yiddish. The civil rights activist and union leader also recognized the power of music to promote peace. There is a social purpose in what we do. You sing about history, so that kids learn about history. You sing from your heart uh, about peaceable intent, about a world that's better than the world that we have, about an America that is better than the America we have, about an Israel that's better than the Israel we have. And when you do that, you love this world more, not less. In 2014, Bikel was invited to sing in the Austrian parliament in Vienna, on the occasion of the 75th anniversary of Kristallnacht. In the presence of all of Austria's top dignitaries, Bikel spoke of having become a refugee and remaining one in some way for the rest of his life. I thank you for choosing to honor my people in this way, he said to them. And I would like to point out the great symbolic significance of this event, for the mass murderers are gone and I'm still here, singing my songs of peace and freedom. People ask me what I want written on my gravestone. And uh, I could think of only one phrase. Der Singer von sein Volk. I'm the singer of my people. In my own life.